constructive role. Yeah. Um, I think they're really proud of the fact that. So who who else is covering the series? Interesting to see. Like I think I mean, yeah. There's a lot going on with the last sort of five years. Um, I think that there are a lot of lessons that we can learn from the response to uh, COVID nineteen. Uh, I'm yet to see evidence that we're going to though. And I think that that's because people are um, very, very capable of responding to a very near present danger. Right? We, we kind of set up well for that. But we're terribly bad at dealing with slow moving, distributed, somewhat invisible threats like climate change. Um, w there's been a lot of momentum over the last two years, but we have also seen a fraying of the consensus around the Paris Agreement. So the things that really underlie that are uh, the developed world um, commitment to delivering $100 billion worth of finance per year to the developing world to enable them to make the transition to a low carbon economy and help to build resilience to the effects of climate change and so on. Now the developed world so far has not delivered on that promise and that has led to two things, one of which is a breakdown in trust and kind of essentially those two camps. Um, but also there are countries, the more authoritarian regimes, um, you know, who want to kind of take apart the you know, international rules-based system. It's given them an excuse. So I think it is really important that we stop providing that excuse to them. You know, there is a huge amount that we have done over the course of the last four years. But is it enough? No. And, and the thing is, it never will be enough. We know that every single year we are going to have to continue to take new and further actions on climate change because this is a, a you know, multi-generational battle over the course of the next 30 years and beyond. It's going to involve every part of our economy, every part of our society. Uh, and so the work is never done.